Hey, welcome to the show. It's New Thought Talk. I am your host, the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in the Central Valley of California. And I got to tell you, you know, if you happened to catch the show a couple of weeks ago when my guest was Michael J. Allen, well, it was such a good show, at least I thought so, and I really enjoyed it. I've had Michael J. Allen, guest extraordinaire, back for another show. We're going to talk, and we're just probably going to freeform it on some stuff, uh, spirituality, new thought, uh, psychology, and uh, life in general. So, Michael, welcome to the show again. I really appreciate the fact that you showed up <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Rev. Steve. I, I did. I, I had a great time last last time now last time we talked about your personal journey and and where you know how you came to uh, where you're at today and, and the things that you're doing and and since then we've had a chance to talk a little bit more you're getting ready to take a, a workshop on the Enneagram and you're going to be bringing that into the prison prison system and stuff teaching young men how to uh, you know embody that in their life to, to make life changes and you know that included with a lot of the the philosophy of new thought, which is is a life living philosophy more than a dogmatic uh, spiritual teaching per se. Um, I just you know I, I think that's a that's a powerful thing that you're doing. You know, so uh, tell me, I'll, give us a little bit of a, 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 a definition of the enneagram, how it works. Well, the enneagram is a uh, personality test, mm -hmm. and it has uh, about 140 questions. Mm -hmm. And that's the long version. And then there's yeah. a shorter version that gives you sort of a, a general idea of what of the nine personality types you are dominant within. Mm -hmm. We are several personality types, but uh, there's a dominant personality type with a couple of uh, supporting uh, cast members in that <laughs> respect. Uh, but the, the, the beauty of the Enneagram is uh, People get to read about personality types and they get to see their own patterns of behavior. Mm -hmm. And when you can read and discover your own patterns of behavior and you are the witness of those patterns and behavior, then you're responsible. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you right there because this idea of being the witness you know, of your behavior. But people go through the day all day long. They never pay attention to what they are how they are reacting they just interact you know life comes at us the speed of life you know I react to this my emotions go out the window on this and I get you know happier teed off on this but they don't observe themselves and and this you know my and I'm I'm new to this you know this particular tool so I'm learning a little bit about it and I appreciate you sharing this with us but uh, seeing this as a tool that we can learn to observe because as we learn about ourselves and our patterns and stuff we begin to observe them then we have the power to the power of understanding and when you understand something you can change it you know if you don't understand it you're a victim of it right. so okay so so they become observant of their personality traits and stuff um, tell me let's go into it a little bit more well, once you become more aware of who you really are, you seem to have more resource and access mm -hmm. to becoming more of who you really are and making choices that are more uh, supportive of what you believe you want to become in the mm -hmm. world. Right. And I think that as long as you're alive and breathing in a body, you're always becoming who you are. Uh, some more conscious of that than others. You know, some more... Uh, some people participate more in that mm -hmm. than, than others. You know, some people are always in the moment of, <laughs> of their becoming, and some people are like, "Okay, I'll become this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it today. Yes. Maybe I'll get enthused tomorrow. Right. We'll talk about it the day after. I get tomorrow. on the spiritual path tomorrow about <laughs> yeah. three. Yeah, pretty much. You know, you know and and the thing is, uh, a lot of people, Michael, I don't believe realize that as we begin to self understand. We also begin to to exercise our spirituality to a greater degree. You know, um, there's a lot of people that think that spirituality is something that you grow, 
or some spirituality something that you become but you can't be any more spiritual than you are what you can do is express the truth of what you are and you don't have to be a believer in any particular religious philosophy you don't even have to believe in in god per se to be a spiritual person a spiritual being and express that in life but it comes again about understanding the who and what you are and beginning to express that so you're going to take this tool into the prison. What kind of audience are you going to have there, Michael? Well, the audience is uh, a variety of people within yeah. the prison system. Uh, the, the organization that I'm working with, uh, they're in the county system. They're mm -hmm. in San Quentin. They're in uh, a state system in, uh, out of Colorado and Texas. Right. And uh, uh, there's another private agency that they work with in Finland, mm -hmm. uh, in another country. And those, those environments are a variety of people with a variety of uh, um, previous backgrounds. Right. So, some as much as lifers. Right. Um, but we're talking about a group of people who have never really had a more broader perspective of their internal insights mm -hmm. in terms of what they create and how they've created the problems, right. the challenges and the circumstances in their life. Mm -hmm. the, the Enneagram is a great tool for helping them understand how their behavior caused them to make the choices that have caused them to find themselves with the challenges they're faced with. Mm -hmm. So now that they understand that it's their behavior and they're responsible for it, they could, they could see more resources for change. I, I'm not responsible for my behavior. You know, it, 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 it was my daddy or my aunt or my uncle or that, that bullied down the block or you know, whatever. I mean, okay. obviously, and I'm obviously being facetious, but you know, Michael, one of the, the, the empowering things for me about New Thought in particular is the concept of self-responsibility. Being responsible for your experience with life because, and, and coming to that understanding. And when people first come in, oftentimes because they come from other dogmatic type philosophies or, or other types of environments, they address the world as responsibility for how I react is out here. You know, and see, this is how I find a real interest in the Enneagram because it's teaching kind of the same type of thing, you know, coming from a, a non-spiritual, you know, sort of uh, well, well, know, focus, but you can't, you can't really avoid the spirituality no, aspect. No, you, you can't it. avoid the truth. Yeah. You can't avoid the truth. Yeah. And, and, and the truth is, all human beings mm -hmm. were made in the image and likeness of an intelligence that governs the universe. That's true. You got me on board. doesn't matter what religion you're in. Yep. All human beings are created by that intelligence. Right. Okay? And the second thing is, all human beings are given the same power as that intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To create, see, touch, hear, feel, manifest, uh, to create whatever they want with their life. All human beings have that, mm -hmm. regardless of physical challenges. If you're alive in a body and you have a mind, you can create an incredible life. Would you agree? I agree. Okay. So, why wouldn't anyone want to pay more attention to what they're capable of than give power right. to things they don't even control? Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. There's so many things we focus on that we have absolutely zero control over. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that we do have control over, we spend minimal amounts of time focusing on. That's right. Life comes, I like to say life comes at us at the speed of life. How we experience that, that's how we determine. Mm -hmm. There's, things are going to happen. Tragedies are going to erupt. We can still be at peace and in harmony and even with a, an inner level of possibly joy and happiness in the middle of tragedy. But we got to know that we can do that. Most people are told when tragedy happens, it's the result of something outside of us, and I have to react in a certain negative sort of way, mm -hmm. whether it's through anger or, or depression or, or you know panic or, or whatever. And the truth is, as you learn that you have this control, that this is the one thing that you really do have control over in your life experience. You can, it's like, it, it's like in a movie where you've got a camera shooting in on a scene from this direction. 
and everything looks terrible as the, as the, from the angle of the camera. But when you learn that you can shift over here, that you have the power to shift the camera over here, which is showing, even though it's the same scene per se from a different perspective, all of a sudden it's not so terrible. You know, all of a sudden it's manageable. All of a sudden there's things that can be done. There's, there's options, there's you know, uh, solutions to issues that you maybe have thought were unsolvable per se. And that's the power that you have as an individual. But getting people to understand that, and whether you come at it from uh, new thought or whether you come at it from psychology, you know, the Enneagram and stuff, doesn't make any difference to me how you come at it. Getting the individual, these young men that are young or not so young men that you're going to be addressing in the prison system, majority of them, from my experience, experience that experience as a place of victimhood. You know, they're there because things happen to them. They're there because they had no choice. They had no options, per se. But that's not true. But they don't know it's not true. So for them, that is their truth. You, bring it, you shift that camera for them. You bring them this, this different view. Um, how long is this program in the prisons with uh, who's the woman that, that has created it? Sorry, I forgot her name. Susan Olesek. Yeah. How long has she been doing Olesek. this? Thing? Olesek. 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 Uh, you know, she's been focused on this, I think, uh, since, uh, my understanding is since 2012, but I'm sure before that, because mm -hmm. there took some, uh, some. she was always always in the practice of, of, of the Enneagram, and, um, but going into prisons, I think, started right. in 2012, and uh, it's it's been tremendous, because well, it's... That's it's what I was going to ask you next, is it's been in there long enough that results... We've had time to see results. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you know about the results. Well, I've been to two classes mm -hmm. inside the system with her, and what I've noticed is that when you give a man the ability to discover himself, mm -hmm. he feels so much more relaxed that he can figure out why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. Most of the men that that I've observed mm -hmm. don't have a guiding father, grandfather, uncle. Right. Uh, may may not even know who their father was. Mm -hmm. uh, may have only been raised by women. Mm -hmm. um, have a very negative uh, belief system around relationship mm -hmm. uh, because they they don't have a model of relationship. Right. They never saw their parents mm -hmm. in relationship, and you know a lot of those men are making choices based on on feelings they don't understand right so that's all false information mm -hmm. you know so you're you're operating in your life off off of misconstrued faulty information mm -hmm. because you haven't had a value system a, a guidance uh, a relationships where people can guide you in a healthy way so once you give a man the tools of, of, of why his personality is the way it is based mm -hmm. on circumstance and condition right. he could understand how to change his current day personality that's right because he has the power to to one understand mm -hmm. how it developed and two how he can change it michael you you know it the computer industry the tech industry has been around long enough now that most people are aware of the old saying that was uh encapsulated early on it was garbage in garbage out yeah you know and that's that's the way it is with our minds, with our life experience. Absolutely. Garbage in, garbage out. I like to take that and say God in, God out, you know, as we, as we begin to, to make those changes. Or good in, good out of someone. Yes, yeah, so let's face it. I deal with people, and you, you will be dealing with people that will go, there's no God. You know, and that's okay. It's okay for them to believe that there's no God. I don't care. You know, because we can still talk. I can talk about their their inner urges, their their psyche, their you know their feelings and stuff like that. I believe that, that is God expressing through us. I don't have to convince them that that is, but they can they can ex because it's experiential. You know they can feel the feelings. They can they can uh, go into a meditative state and experience the the inner beingness of being in meditation. For example, they can they can use affirmations and. In, done properly, they can see the demonstration of that. So we don't have to. We don't have to define it as well. That's that's God, son, or that's God, young lady. You know, that's just that's working for you, right? Oh yeah, it's working for you. Then we're going to 
we're you know we're going to work on that. And they go, yeah. And we're going to go, yeah, hold, hold that thought, Michael. We're gonna, right. we got, I got the uh, word. we got to take our first break. We'll continue this great conversation when we come back. We'll see you then. And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Pasture graze delicious, nutrient-dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit OrganicPastures.com or call 1-877-RAW-MILK. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. CentralValleyTalk.com well, welcome back to New Thought Talk. I am your host, Steve Walling, a minister at the Spiritual Awareness Center located in Central Valley, California. My guest today is Michael J. Allen, a guest extraordinaire. We've been talking about the Enneagram and New Thought and so on and so forth, and it's become the Mike and Steve show. And I'm, I'm digging it, Mike. <laughs> this is good. Okay, so you're, you're in the prison and you're working with these young men, or, and, and you've you're in the process of, of getting to that point, but you've had the opportunity to observe it on some level. And I was asking you about the results of the program as a whole. What have you seen, what do you know about, is insofar as how, how this is working in the lives of these, these men? Well, the most obvious thing that I've experienced is that uh, these men love themselves and they love each other. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to explain that because uh, the work doesn't focus on love or mm -hmm. uh, acceptance or appreciation, right. but it certainly reflects that. Uh -huh. uh, after people understand their personality type, get to have a discussion, a conversation, a, a connection around it, they begin to understand themselves and others in a, in a, in a much more powerful way. And that's emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, really understanding yourself and understanding other people. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. The mm -hmm. other thing is men who have never had conversation or having conversation yeah because they have an idea of themselves that they can talk about that's not defined by someone else men as a whole particularly in, in our society you know we're we're real good wall builders we we build our you know we got our defensive system we've got our armor we've got you know we've got our our shutdowns you know buttons and all this stuff and uh, if you can if you can get open up people in that particular environment to you know letting that stuff go basically not even dropping just discarding it where they can have those kind of conversations that's got to be a, a pretty amazing transformation to watch well I don't know anything more amazing than creating a, an environment for people to really have the space to be who they are mm -hmm. And we are thinking, feeling, emotional, believing human beings. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are not practicing 
that expression openly with mm -hmm. each other, that mm -hmm. it's judged, criticized, ridiculed, and and and, mm -hmm. and um, criticized by many and mm -hmm. others who are different. Right. It is probably one of the most unintelligent things we do mm -hmm. as a human being in how we treat ourselves and each other. Um, I would much rather people create environments where every conversation is true, mm -hmm. every thought, idea, and belief system is true, but people begin to understand, based on the life experience, is it the truth? Mm -hmm. Because we all come from different cultures, ethnic backgrounds, circumstances, conditions, and what we've gone through is true for us, mm -hmm. but is it the truth right. of who we are as spiritual beings, divine beings? Well, you, you mentioned Loving. belief in your description there, and my truth is based on my beliefs. Exactly. And your truth is based on your beliefs. Exactly. And even though we may come at certain things similarly and have similar type beliefs, you have a whole plethora of beliefs that are unknown, maybe even foreign to me, and likewise I do too. So your reality, your truth, is not my truth. Right. But there's something behind that, isn't there? Exactly. You know, and it's getting to that point. And for me as a minister in New Thought, I get real excited when we start talking about it. You know, it, it, it's hard sometimes not to jump around and go, oh yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. and stuff, because this is really exciting. And maybe it's because growing up male in this male experience that was not a part of my experience growing up and now it's like it's a liberating freedom to recognize that to to and to share that with people you know your life is your life but your life can be so much more when you open your life up to consciously being aware of who you are mm -hmm. understanding who you are mm -hmm. understanding your power your power no one else's power. It's not someone else that's going to make you happier or make you sad or impose upon you. It, it's your power. And, and, and people don't understand that. You know? They don't understand that they've got that kind of power. And so as I begin to talk to people, and, and coming at it, like, again, not from a, 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 a psychological, psychology type of uh, point of view, but coming at it from a spiritual point of view, based in, in new thought, in, in religious science and understanding that we as uh, evolutionary beings were subject to all the forces of evolution that got us to this point of all of a sudden we have hit a point of conscious awareness. You know, up until that time we were uh, stimulus response just like every other being in nature. And you see it in nature, you go to the mountains, you go you know, wherever you see, even, even pets in our, in our homes and stuff, there's a, a cause and effect and a response that's predicated on that being being itself. And those beings, whether it be a horse, a dog, a cat, a squirrel, or whatever, they are the ultimate of the hoarseness, dogness, catness, and stuff. But once we get to that point of conscious awareness, what I like to say, our I am moment, we recognize that there's something beyond the, the being that is the evolutionary experience, that I have the ability of choice, then those things that that I reacted with through my fear mechanism, flight, fight type mechanism, I now have the ability to, to have different inputs, controls, and stuff like that. But most of us, we grow up really not paying much attention to it. And so we're subject, everything that we do, speaking generally, is subject to my reaction to what's going on around me. And our reactions evolutionarily are always set up based on are you friend or foe or are you neutral? Are you going to promote me or are you going to damage me? And how am I going to react? Do I need to, you know, or, or do I need to manipulate you with words or whatever? And when you get to this point of truth, understanding that there's something below that, understanding that we can reach that, everything changes. There's a big shift. You know? And now you've been a practitioner in religious science for how many years now? 1998. 1998. So you got a week or two under your belt. With a that couple. Too. Yeah. And I'm sure you've seen some, some incredible things happen as a result of that. Um, in, your, in your experience in New Thought, what's, what stands out that was most prominent in Michael J. Allen's life? Most prominent? Yeah.
Well, I think the most prominent thing is to continue to understand that in in this moment in my life mm -hmm. is the power and the presence of life itself. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that any time I spend on what has happened or what I hope to happen mm -hmm. takes me away from the most powerful moment in time and space yeah. now. That, that is probably the most profound thing to understand about about new thought yeah is that it, 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 we are in the game right now we That's are it. we are in we are on the assembly line we are we are in the presence of creation there there isn't like nothing else needs to happen right. for us to create it's a not new that world five minutes ago no and it's not what's no. going to happen in an hour from no now. it's no. right here it's right now yeah so Really letting myself really understand how powerful that is, mm -hmm. is, is important. So someone comes up to, to Michael, who comes from a, a more traditional religious background. They say, you know, I, I understand that, that you're into this, you know, that you're a practice, you know, you know um, how is that different than what I believe? I mean, that's a question that I get all the time. Do you, uh, you know, I'm sure you must have gotten that question from time to time also. Well, uh, yeah, I get that question a lot. And my response is, there's nothing different about God. Mm -hmm. The reason why I bring it up is a couple weeks ago, Michael, after our Sunday service at church, I got a phone call from uh, a woman, and she wanted to know about our organization. And she comes from a traditional, and she said, well, that's just, she says, that's just wrong. You know, you can't, in the basic premise that I, I asked her, you know, as we were getting into this conversation, because I can tell where it's going. I said, do you believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God? And she was like, absolutely it is. And we have, that's where we part ways. I do believe the, the Bible is inspired teaching. There's great wisdom in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. I believe that this, this fellow that we call Jesus the Christ is this incredible teacher that brought wisdom that is wisdom of the ages, so to speak. But it's not as the book is written inerrantly. It's the truth, the truth that we find there. And there's so much truth. You are the likeness and the image. You, you, thus you have everything I can do, you can do, and that much more. You know, ask believing, and it is done. You know, these are concepts that are bandied about in traditional religions, but they don't come at it I believe is the way that, that Jesus taught it, you know, and so you know you've got the dogma and the stuff about that. So people ask, how do we how do we see ourselves, you know, doing what we're doing? And I like what you say. There is no difference in God, but how do you explain that to someone that says, well, that's not the God that I believe in? Well, it's not my job to explain it to you. Oh, you know, oh. It, it it really isn't. I mean, you you. We all get to believe whatever we want to believe about the life experience. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing that we get to create whatever we want to create with our own thinking. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. I don't think it's beautiful when you try and tell me that what you're creating is what I need to create. I don't think that's beautiful. I think that's limiting to the manifestation of God itself. Uh -huh. To say that one human being has to see something a certain way. But I'm a true believer. Yeah, you may, you, you may be a true believer, but it's your belief system. It may not be the truth. Mm -hmm. So I don't have an argument with you. Right. You may believe that. It may be the way it's always working for you in your life, and I trust that that's true. But it may not be the truth. And, and Michael, this is where I see the, the breakdown that begins to take place. Because I agree with you. It may not be the truth. But for someone that believes that their truth is the truth, okay, and, and obviously the walls are up, the doors are closed and stuff, but getting to a point of there is a truth that I don't know what that truth is in, in, in truth, you know, but I know there's, there's an absolute, there is an ultimate. I know that it expresses itself in this thing that we call life, but it's not for me, like, like you said, it's not for me to convince somebody of that. Mm -hmm. But when someone brings that questioning, you know, when 
when someone says, well, you know, how, how can you believe that, that God is in you? You know, that, does that make you a God? And we get these kind of questions. Well, I, me personally, I, I, I see no value in debating religion. Mm -hmm. So if our, if our conversation is on the level of religion, I'm probably one of the most ignorant because I don't study religion. I'm not, I'm not really interested in religion. I'm interested in, 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 in the power and the truth of the universe. Mm -hmm. And that goes beyond religion. So it's great to debate religion and it's great to understand people's differences in religion, just like people's differences in artwork. Mm -hmm. But I, I get to believe whatever I want to believe, just like you do. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to have a debate about it. We just need to accept that beliefs are part of the universe. You get to have yours, I get to have mine, and there's room and space for everybody to have a different belief, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. That we all can be on the planet and have a different belief about one thing. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is fascinating. That I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh -huh. so, to, so, so we really don't have a conversation about your religion. Your religion is perfect for you. I like but, your religion. But I feel insecure when, when you approach me in that way. <laughs> well, now let's talk about emotional intelligence. There you go. Let's what talk about let, okay, yeah, we got, let's we got talk about, about emotional intelligence. Here, so because, what we're going to do is we're going to make the next segment transition into emotional intelligence because that is an important part of the conversation. That's the psychology. There you go. So we'll see you when we come back. featuring a selection of recumbent bikes. Check them out at ClovisBicycle.com or call 325-2453. Hi, Haven Young here. Join Mike Briggs and myself here at Central Valley Talk at 1212 North Van Ness, the second and fourth Saturdays in June, June 11th and June 25th at Central Valley Talk and find out more about the most nutritious plant on earth. Moringa Oliveira, and we're going to be giving away a six-day sample pack to those to someone that attends. And find out more about Moringa Oliveira at our website, mostnutritiousplant.com. Don't forget the hyphens in between. See you here. Have some fun. Come on and find out about Moringa Oliveira. It'll change your life. Give your home and yard a facelift with Oliva's Landscaping. Oliva's Landscaping can make a tired yard look fresh again. Whether you need one-time or recurring service, repair, or a whole new design, contact Oliva's Landscaping. Call Patrick Oliva's at 273-0142. Realtor Letty Pingitori is a broker associate with Keller Williams, and she is also a voiceover artist. Contact Letty at 559-281-4568. Need raisins? Call National Raisin Company at 559-834-5981 or online at nationalraisin.com. CentralValleyTalk.com Welcome back to New Thought Talk. We're just going to move right on ahead with, I guess, Michael J. Allen. We're talking about emotional freedom technique. Right? Emotional intelligence. Intelligence, excuse me. Emotional intelligence. Let's talk about it. You know, you brought up the idea that, um, you brought up the real thing that people struggle with, and they struggle with feelings. Yeah. And when you're talking to someone and you touch their feeling, mm -hmm. whether they understand that feeling or not, yeah. you get this type of response, reaction, uh, rejection, uh, anger, irritation, irritation, right. anger, pushback, mm -hmm. resistance, because people have such a very negative relationship to feelings. People believe that feelings are who we are and that feelings are other people's responsibility. Yeah, and those are very damaging belief systems mm -hmm. because feelings are here from a psychological point of view. Right, feelings are here to give feedback. Right, 
about what is healthy or unhealthy, good or bad, right or wrong, mm -hmm. basically. Right. That's what our feelings do for us. But if we have a negative belief system around feelings and we believe that feelings are someone else's responsibility. It's your job to make me feel good. Exactly. Oh, you haven't been nice exactly. to me. You've hurt, you've hurt my feelings. feelings. Right. Yeah. So, and it's like. It's shame on you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a terrible position to be in. Yeah. But we put so many people in our lives in that position. We do. You know, you make me this, you make me that, you make me this, you make me that. All human beings have feelings. They do. All human beings have the power of thought. And energy follows every thought that a human being thinks. That's a fact. And the feeling that you have is feedback about how you want to express yourself in the world mm -hmm. based on what you're experiencing. In that moment. Right? So now you want to take what you understand about what you're experiencing with your feelings and express your emotions in a way that you create a win for yourself and for everyone around you. Mm -hmm. Because we have the power to do that. Now Are some people think that because you cause me to feel a certain way, uh -huh. I have the right to cause you to feel a certain way. Yeah, well absolutely. Which is called, <laughs> which is called bullying and fighting. Yes. Um, but that's not the loving thing to do. No, it's not. And, and also there, there's a clarity that a lot of people don't have when it comes to feelings. Someone will say, I feel good. Well, good's not a feeling per se. Happy, joy is a feeling, or that may, that may be a wrong thing. Yeah, you made me feel, um, and you put something in that to describe, that's not really a feeling, instead of something that describes a feeling. And the, the, the way I'm getting to this, or un understand is, uh, years ago I was uh, in a workshop and someone was telling me that if you can say, I am this, that's not a feeling. If I feel this, you know, I, well, now I, I lost it. But there's people, they use words for feelings that aren't feelings. And they use them as tools to, to dominate the conversation oftentimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel happy. That's a feeling. Um, I feel very upset with you. I feel, um, I feel like you've made, I feel like you've made me want to do something. And they, they, they encapsulate that as a feeling. I feel like you have made me want to do something. And that's, that's not a feeling. Well, you can see the belief systems around right. feelings and around thoughts and around projections. Mm -hmm. That's the psychology. Right. And that's, um, it's, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it other than it's uh, irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Because basically people are not taught about feelings. Mm -hmm. People are not taught about the, the science and the power of thought. Mm -hmm. People are not taught that repetitive thought and repetitive feeling creates belief systems. Right. People aren't taught these things, but every human being goes through this, mm -hmm. which is fascinating, isn't right. it? And if we understood thoughts, feelings, and emotions, we probably would have probably maybe, I don't know, 60, 70 percent less conflicts mm -hmm. in, the whole, in our day mm -hmm. if we looked at our lives from a responsible emotional intelligence perspective. Okay, so someone that is uh, just kind of becoming aware of this, where, where do we go? What do we do with this? How do we, you know, is there, you know, do I, okay, I, I, there's this emotional uh, intelligence, how do I, how do I look at this? How do I address this as an well, individual? Well, let me explain how I okay. go through the process, how I help people get through the mm -hmm. process. One, it's important to understand mindfulness. Okay. Because you got to be mindful of of what's really going on inside you. Right. Okay. Two, you have to really accept that there's a higher part of you, a higher power. Mm -hmm. There is a soul, a spirit, a divine being within you that defines who you are. Mm -hmm. You have to accept that, you know, whether you're religious or not. That is the mm -hmm. truth. There's a soul within you. Right. And then you came into this physical world, and when you came into the physical world, you acquired sensations. Sight, hearing, touch, feel... Right. And those, that's information, that's feedback. Mm -hmm. And then you used those tools, and then you came into the world being born, and along with those tools came feelings. Mm -hmm. They meant something. There's an experience happening. Okay. So there's a feeling that happens. Right. Now, 
you got to understand what those feelings are, and adults are supposed to teach you. Because right. nobody's born with the definitions. Anyway, so but, then you move on. Wait to, a second. Uh, where, where was that owner's manual? Where's that instruction <laughs> book? Yeah, yeah, it didn't come with anybody. Yeah. So, so then you go from uh, thoughts, feelings, and then you want to express yourself in the world. We, right. We don't always teach young people how to express themselves in the world. We expect them to express themselves in the world. Or, or you know what? I don't want to hear that out of you. Exactly. Go, go be quiet. Go sit right. down. You know, we so, do that. Yeah. And, and then you have, well, that whole, that whole sequence of experience creates a belief system. Mm -hmm. Men don't cry. Men don't cry. You, right. you name it. There are a number of yeah. things that happen because of that belief system. Mm -hmm. So the thing I would tell someone is that you have to understand this structure. Right. You have to understand that who you were before you got into the human experience that is confusing you. Mm -hmm. Because we've confused ourselves. Yes, we have. We have a lot of things that are backwards in the way we even manage our own internalized belief system. And that is causing, like, societal dysfunction, not just, you know, family right. and human dysfunction, yeah. but societal dysfunction. It starts out personally. Right. may extend to the family, but it will extend... To the community because it's and the way beyond. you treat people exactly the yeah. way you treat yourself and the way you treat people and and just I'm going to roll this back for just a, a second what I what I was trying to think and it just had slipped my mind if you can replace I think with I feel the, the way it came to me you're not talking about a feeling you know I think you're mean to me I feel you're mean to me and if I can if you replace one you understand what I'm saying it's just it was a tool for for people in the moment that are you know, allowing themselves to kind of get a little ahead of themselves and they can go, wait a second, if I can replace I think with I feel, then I'm not talking about a feeling. Well, you know? I, I, would, I would take it a step further. Okay. I would say to people, what are you sensing? Okay. Because you have senses before you have feelings. Right. And if you could get people to understand their senses, mm -hmm. you, give, you, give them, you give them a step before they start turning the senses as, oh, well, I feel this, so this must be happening. Right. Sometimes when you're sensing something, that's all you're doing is sensing it. Mm -hmm. When we turn it into a feeling, we got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. we got to react to it. Exactly. we got to take action on it. So or, what yeah. are your senses telling you? Mm -hmm. You know, because everything starts here. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, to, we have to really understand where it begins. Yeah. You know, as practitioners in, in New Thought, that's one of the beauties of being a practitioner. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the origin of something, right. you really can't help someone change, transform, or heal it. Because you don't know the origin of it. You don't know what its cause is. Uh oh, that gets kind of in that spiritual field. Yeah, yeah. We, we can go, we and, can go and there. And that's it. So let's go there. What is the origin? What, when, when we're dealing with some, someone comes to us, and, and whatever it is, I'm broken. Okay, now, Whether it's physical, emotional, and making a difference. I'm broken. You know, what's the origin of that brokenness? Well, I would say that um, one of the ways to help someone get to that origin is to, is to say, why don't you sit, take a breath, close your eyes, and go back to the first time in your life you felt broken. Mm -hmm. you, it could be at any time in your life. That can be scary. Don't judge it. Well, it could, yeah. but if you want to change, yeah. then forget about saying, being scared. But you threw in a word there. You said, don't judge it. Right, and and we're taught to judge. Society right, exactly. tells us to judge. Exactly. You know, we have to we have to judge this. It's always this versus that. And in truth, it's not. You know, as we were talking before we came on on the air, this idea of a universal acceptance, learning to accept the what is. If I can go back to that moment where I first experienced without judge, oh, that was no judgment. Okay, that's just the what is. Most people say, why do I have to go back? I said, you're not going back. Actually, when you really tune in to what that experience is, it's in the moment with you. It's here, yeah. It's, it's really not something in the past. You keep recreating that experience subjectively. Mm -hmm. And that's what's causing the interrupt in your challenging we call uh, baggage, thought process. And we carry our baggage. So th that's why I would say to people, you do need to understand your thinking. Right. Because your thinking keeps the repetitive feelings going. And you do need to understand that that feeling can be changed when you understand the thinking and, what's, and how the thought keeps creating it. Okay, Michael, we've covered a lot of ground. We're taking our last break. As we come into this last segment, what I'd like to do is talk about younger people. Because we, you know, all this stuff, I know people that have had a little mileage under their belt, a little understanding, a little knowledge, you know, they get it. But we want to talk about younger people because 
they don't, they're not necessarily hearing the conversation that you and I are having today. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. We'll see you then. with Keller Williams and she is also a voiceover artist. Contact Letty at 559-281-4568. I was an addict, an opiate addict. Be three years clean in October. I was renewed at the Fresno Rescue Mission. My mom, who does a lot of cooking, has been part of the rescue mission, has been willing to help teach people to make jams and jellies and other food. The Fresno Rescue Mission And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Fresno. Pasture-grazed, delicious, nutrient-dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit OrganicPastures.com or call 1-877-RAW-MILK. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. CentralValleyTalk.com Welcome back. It's New Thought Talk. I am your host, Reverend Steve Walling. My guest, once again, is Michael J. Allen. We're talking about all sorts of wonderful things, and I want to go right into Michael. Uh, young people making that connection with, you know, the, the emotional intelligence, uh, spirituality, new thought, being able to self-empower. Because for me, see, for me, in this world that's, that's going in so many different directions with the tech stuff, what's going on in the, the outer world, what's going on in our communities, because we no longer have these small, isolated communities. Everybody's so connected now. You know, how do we, how can, and you and I have talked about this a little bit, how do we reach younger people in such a way as to stimulate an interest? I'm sitting here with my iPhone or, or whatever, and some guy's telling me that, that I can be expressing my spiritual reality, and I'm going, you know, who cares? You know, I'm, I'm texting and stuff. How do we reach the, you know, what do we, do we create an app for it? I mean, you know, what do we do? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah, thank you. I am I'm glad a, you settled that. <laughs> I'm a strong believer in, yeah, create an app for it. Uh, that's definitely an idea I have, uh, an application for helping young people understand how to have a successful life plan. Yeah. Uh, and what it means to plan their life. Um, you know, we got a lot of young people out there who don't have the nuclear family. Mommy and daddy's at home. Right. Sister, brother, mommy and daddy have two incomes. Their life is perfect. They're involved in everything possible. They're in the best communities, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's not the norm for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, the norm is, you know, how do I have a better attitude today? Um, How am it, I going to get through the day without getting into a fight right, or being bullied? Exactly. Or, yeah, you honestly. know, I don't want to see my mom yelling at me like that. I don't right. want to see my mom being hurt like that. I, you know, I wish I knew who my father was. I mm -hmm. mean, there are a lot of things that are plaguing the mind today. Right. But here's the beautiful thing about young people. Young people are still close to the truth. And the truth is they came to this planet to have an amazing life. Yeah. That's the truth. Okay, they mm -hmm. did not come here to suffer and to go through pain and suffering. That's not why they came to the planet. No. Now, the 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 situations they're in are situations that are perfect for them because those situations will make them stronger if they're awake. Exactly. To being coming who they really are. Young people have to stop following other young people because other young people don't know how to teach young people how to be young people. <laughs> 
I ain't mad at you. No. I ain't mad at you. But you learn through experience. You learn through people who have had more life experience. Right. You learn through people who want to teach you about life. Uh, and I'd like to have more adults out there who are willing to teach young people about life, not just whether or not they can pass an English exam. Yeah. You know, so there are young people out there that I've worked with at a great school, Seoul Charter School, that want to learn how to be great, amazing human beings mm -hmm. who can manage their academic abilities. Right. But how do I be the human being I want to be when nobody's telling me how great I am? How to be the human being being human. Exactly. Versus being exactly. everything else that we're told exactly. that they got to be. So yeah. teaching young people about thoughts, feelings, and emotions mm -hmm. and teaching them how to empower each other mm -hmm. and how to be in an environment where the positive, powerful communication is being communicated, people grow, evolve, and become stronger throughout their days. That's right. So that's what we've been doing at the Soul School. We've been teaching young people about emotional intelligence and how to use the most highly effective way to communicate to themselves and each other so that they have more positive outcomes. How do you how do you reach these young people, Michael, that have no concept? Would you, you know, even if you don't use the word love, you're still teaching love consciousness on some level. They have no they have no life experience that they can relate to when you when we're talking about that type of feeling emotion. Well, you know, the truth is, it's in our nature to know love. Okay, it it is in our nature. I mean, when when when, when if you take someone who, who does not come from a loving environment mm -hmm. and you put them in a loving environment, it may be strange, but it certainly feels better than being yelled at, screamed at, kicked, slapped, hit, beat up, or ignored or abandoned. It certainly feels a whole lot better than that. Mm -hmm. So there's a nature in us that really understands the power and the power of of how love heals us and mm -hmm. sustains us and makes us whole. That's in young people. They want to love. They want to be connected. They want to have friends. They want to be um, appreciated and, and validated and, and lifted up. They want that. They, and I know 30, 40 of them at Soul School will tell you that yeah. in New York Minute. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. They would much rather participate in life that way than the way they've been participating in life. You know, right. A lot of them think they have anger issues. They don't have anger issues. Nobody's told them how great they are that day. You know, I yeah. mean, it's easy to say I have anger issues, and it's much harder to say, can somebody tell me I'm great today? Yeah. They get up in the morning, what do they get at home before they leave? May not even get right. breakfast. They may right. get not just, you know, let out the door. They may get kicked out the door. Hell, they may get up in the morning and no one's there. Ain't nothing wrong with young people, Reverend Steve. That's it. Ain't nothing wrong with young people. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with young people. Yeah. They will ignite your day mm. if you ignite their heart. And that's it. We've got to reach them. Exactly. We've got to reach them. Exactly. Touch them. Adults and, have to wake up. And, and you're doing that through you know, the program that you've taken to the school. Exactly. But we've got to do it spiritually in our, in our centers, in our churches, too. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it makes no difference whether you're in a traditional church or a synagogue or a, a, you know, a mosque or whatever. We've got to reach our young people in a way that is self-empowering to them because they're what's coming up. They're the world tomorrow. You know, and if we don't lay the foundation for them to have a better today, well, they won't create a better tomorrow. Here's some things that need to stop happening. Uh, adults need to stop assuming they understand young people. If you don't understand a young person, you need to sit down and, and, and like, work with that. Mm -hmm. You need to understand young people today. Right. And you need to understand the relationship they have with today's world, technology and how technology molds a lot of thinking today. Mm -hmm. uh, older adults need to understand that. Yeah. Teachers need to understand that. I, I know you have this incredible responsibility to teach academic principles and ac academic you know, uh, material, but if you're not teaching about how to be connected in the moment in your teaching, you're kind of missing the boat. Yeah. You know? And young people have to be willing to challenge themselves to ask the smart question, not how, the stupid question. How do young people get to that point? To know that they need to challenge themselves. They already know it. But Let, let's be honest. Okay. Let's be honest. Young people are smart. They're not idiots. They're smart. They know when they're pulling. They know when they're shaking. <laughs> they know when they're jiving. They know when they're honest. They know when they're real. Right. I like working around young people because they hold me accountable in every moment. If yeah. I'm blowing smoke, they're going to tell me in the moment. That's it. If I'm real, they're going to tell me in the moment. So young people are smart, intelligent, open, amazing, and they know when people are pulling their leg or not. They really don't. 
I mean, they really do. So, Michael, you're going to hold that thought. Yeah. We're we're done for today, but we're going to come back to this conversation. Works. For you're going to come back, right? Works for me. All right, good deal. Works for Thank me. you for being on the My show. My pleasure. Man, it goes by too fast. We've got so much to cover yet. All right, folks, that's it. It was it was great as usual. I'm really enjoying the conversations that that I've been having with Michael, both on and off the camera. He's an incredible person. I'll tell you real quick, you can find him on Facebook, Michael J. Allen. He does something called The Gathering here in Fresno, and I highly recommend it if you have the opportunity and you can, you know, through his Facebook, you can find that. And uh, we're about the end of the show, so uh, just, uh, wow, just have a great week. And thank you for watching. May the light of God surround you and the love of God enfold you. May the power of God protect you and the presence of God watch over you because truly, wherever you are, God is. And I know that to be true. So have a great week, and so it is, my friends. Bye. featuring a selection of recumbent bikes. Check them out at ClovisBicycle.com or call 325-2453. Hi, Haven Young here. Join Mike Briggs and myself here at Central Valley Talk at 1212 North Van Ness, the second and fourth Saturdays in June, June 11th and June 25th at Central Valley Talk and find out more about the most nutritious plant on earth. Moringa Oliveira, and we're going to be giving away a six-day sample pack to those to someone that attends. And find out more about Moringa Oliveira at our website, mostnutritiousplant.com. Don't forget the hyphens in between. See you here. Have some fun. Come on and find out about Moringa Oliveira. It'll change your life. Give your home and yard a facelift with Oliva's Landscaping. Oliva's Landscaping can make a tired yard look fresh again. Whether you need one-time or recurring service, repair, or a whole new design, contact Oliva's Landscaping. Call Patrick Oliva's at 273-0142. Betty Pingitori is a broker associate with Keller Williams, and she is also a voiceover artist. Contact Letty at 559-281-4568. Need raisins? Call National Raisin Company at 559-834-5981 or online at nationalraisin.com. CentralValleyTalk.com